Bloomberg interviewed me about day trading. It was three years ago, right after the GameStop insane move. The man who runs the interviews for Bloomberg watched my content. He liked my content. He reached out to me and we did an interview. But I have been trading now for over eight years. And what I think about the stock market is different now than it was three years ago. So what I'd like to do on this YouTube video is run through that set of questions that I was asked on the Bloomberg interview and answer them as I would today. Hit like if you're excited and let's jump into it. By the way, at any point during this, if you would like to see the Bloomberg interview so that you could see what my initial answers were, it's gonna be linked in the top of the description down below. But my answer to this question on the Bloomberg interview, at least what they pulled for the show, went into the Dunning-Kruger effect. It talked about how when you first start learning anything is when you are the most confident about it until you kind of go into this valley of despair when you start realizing how much you don't know. And then as you get more and more expert expertise, you come back up and up on the confidence scale, right? That's the Dunning-Kruger effect. And that's what I talked about with this question with Bloomberg. But I'm going to answer this now from a more practical standpoint, from what I understand after eight years of trading was the mistakes that I made when I first started learning trading, right? Let me actually do this. Let me jump back into the charts and let me pull up my first ever trade, at least my first ever active swing trade. It was CRBP in late 2015 to early 2016. I got in CRBP when it was ripping. I got in, uh, I, it must have been somewhere here. It must have been like somewhere on this day I got in and it wasn't $176 at the, t at the time. Since then it's gone to nothing and it's gone through reverse splits. I don't remember the exact price, but I know it wasn't 176. Anyway, I got in and I got in this stock because it was ripping. This stock was doing like 10% a day every day. And eventually my beginner swing trader mind went, you know what? I'm tired of watching this thing go without me. I'm going to enter right there. Mistake number one. I didn't have a plan. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make any plan. I just knew this stock was going up and I wanted to be a part of it. So I got in. And since I didn't have a plan, I let others control how I felt about the trade. After I entered this trade, it ended up obviously continuing to soar, which was awesome. At one point, I believe up here, I was up over a thousand dollars. It was awesome. But what ended up happening to me was that I was in uh, stock twits. You all know stock twits. It's like where anybody can post any ideas about any ticker. Well, I got on stock twits, and as you can assume, and as you'll know if you've been on the site, it's full of basically just permabulls talking about why their stock is going to go to a million dollars a share. That's basically all the website is. And I bought into that crap as a beginner trader, right? Because I didn't know better. I thought these people on stock twits knew what they were talking about. Spoiler alert, most of them don't. Um, and and this is a, for, for a little bit more context, this is a bio company and they had a PDUFA date coming up, a PDUFA date where they were either going to have their drug passed or failed by the FDA. And I have no expertise in the bio field, not a scientist at all, never worked in that field, never studied that field. But because people on stock twits, once again, the perma bulls on stock twits were saying that it was definitely, oh, it's definitely going to pass. I held, I held and held and held. And all of a sudden I derived this idea. Once again, after the fact, I derived this idea that I was going to hold through the Padufa date. Doing that, I locked in no profits when I was up a thousand dollars. It ended up pulling way down at some point down here. I think I was down like $400. So I went from being I went from being up a thousand to being down 400 and never sold a single share on this day here this was the Padufa date and I got very lucky I got very lucky because like it's something like 75 percent or maybe even more drugs failed their phase three Padufa date this one ended up working the FDA approved the drug and at least at least I was smart enough to sell this stock in pre-market like right after it happened it was even higher than this it was somewhere up here I remember it being my new high in the position I remember it being above this high somewhere in pre-market on this day at least I was smart enough to go 
to follow the plan that I sort of later made up in my mind, right? So I ended up making over $1,100 in that trade, which was really sick and probably what got me hooked into trading, but it was an awful trade. It was full of everything I tell you all not to do. Just chase the hype that you see on Reddit. Listen to what others tell you about... First off, let me go back. Chase the hype you see on Reddit and have no plan before entering your trade. Before you enter any trade, bare minimum, you better know where you're going to get out for profit and where you're going to get out for stop. And you better follow that. I didn't do any of that, right? Chase the hype. Listen to everyone on stock twits that also didn't know what they were talking about. Got really lucky. Locked in profits. But the number one thing I learned when I first started day trading is that. It was a lot of bad habits. That taught me immediately a lot of bad habits. And that's why on this YouTube channel, when I speak about these things with you all, I can be very empathetic. I was that trader. We've all been that trader. And a lot of you are that trader right now. It's, it's, it's the Dunning-Kruger effect. Let's bring this full circle. Let's go back to how I answered the question on Bloomberg. When you're a beginner trader, you think you know everything. You think you're a genius. You think you're smarter than everybody else. When you've been trading for eight years, hopefully don't give up, keep trading. When you make it to eight years, like I have, you'll look back at your first set of trades and you'll look at them just like I am with, wow, I had no idea what I was doing. And hopefully this YouTube channel can help speed up that learning process for you a little bit. But that's what I learned when I first started trading. What differentiates me from a guru? And he meant guru in, in the negative light of the word, in the people that are seen as sort of the scammier people in the stock market social media community. And in one single sentence, I will tell you the difference between me and them. I am doing my best to teach you how to fish. They are doing their best to provide you with fish. And... Oftentimes, and in no way am I saying all of them, or I'm not going to name drop anything like that on this video, but oftentimes there's a very ulterior motive to the fish they are trying to give you, to the stock picks they are trying to sell you, right? Because that's what they're doing. They're selling stock picks, whereas I'm doing my best to teach you how to build systems, how to backtest systems, how to actually build build your own trade strategies that fit your own means. I'm never, I've never told you to go buy anything, to go sell anything. Never have, never will. That's not the point of this channel. And once again, that's the large, largest difference between me and sort of the negative connotation of the word guru. But I'm going to jump into the charts here and show you what I mean when I say ulterior motive. How often do you see stocks with really no news or anything like that? Just get a huge random volume jump, rip, and then come all the way back down. You guys refer to this as a pump and dump. Of course, that's what they are. But what is happening here? And we know it's happening because I said I'm not going to name drop, but these guys are already under house arrest waiting. They're already got DOJ files against them. So I'm not just making this up. Atlas Trading, right? They were a huge, the biggest Discord group there for a while. And they have since gotten an SEC complaint. They've gotten Department of Justice filings, as I said. And we got to see... We, we got we got behind the scenes access for what they were doing on social media versus what they were doing in their trading accounts. The Department of Justice, it, it's a very interesting read. I've actually already made a video on it. If you're interested, I'll put it in the top right corner right now. But the Department of Justice would lay out, okay, Zach Morris would tweet that stock block 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 was gonna go to ten dollars by the end of the day he would or he would buy a position then he would tweet that and then 10 seconds later he would sell the position for a 10 cent gain that's what they were doing and that's what unfortunately a lot of these chat room admins and and this that and the other are doing this is stock rnaz and i actually don't have the news pulled up so i'm not a hundred percent sure on this one this is more of just a chart example but look at how it was trading no volume this is a five minute chart by the way um it and until until 10 30 it traded 56 shares 594 shares 22 shares literally not trading all of a sudden at 1030, it gets 1,600 shares, 950 shares, 1,300 shares, 2,800 shares, 4,000 shares, right? You can see a volume build there. If I make this a little bit bigger, actually, you can see a small volume build there. And then at 1110, you get 26,000 shares, 23,000 shares, 23,000 shares, 55,000 shares. What 
Likely, likely, I don't know for for certain, but I know it happened. Once again, we saw it happening. We got to see the behind the scenes from the Department of Justice filings of Atlas. We know now how these admins are doing this crap. This is most likely your gurus, right, as referred to in the Bloomberg question, front-loading their position. This is your admins buying the stock. And then at 1110, this is when your admins with a large following all go post this across Discord, Twitter, wherever they may have their following. They all go post it. When all their followers start buying, this is where they're selling right? This is the pump and dump. Everyone that loaded three, 4,000 shares of this $5 stock here is now selling it at $6, $6.60. And then not only are they doing that, they are then going on to their social medias and they're flexing their gains that they made on these stocks to lure in more, unfortunately, beginner trader followers who don't know any better to then fall for these tricks again in the future. So that is the, the very, very worst case scenario of a guru. But once again, we know it happens. Unfortunately, we know beginner inner traders fall for it. And the largest difference between me and those people is that I'm not giving you stocks to pick. I'm teaching you how to fish. I'm teaching you how to build trade systems that fit your need. The first part to the answer of this question is that you're already on the right track. You're already doing the right thing. You are here watching this YouTube video and it's however many minutes we're in already. I think this video is already 10 minutes long and you're still watching. You are doing the right thing by studying, right? You are studying how to get better and you are using free content to study. I'm not saying that you should never pay for a course. What I'm saying is you never need to pay for a course. Everything you need to learn about day trading is out there for free. I promise you there's not some like secret that people are keeping behind behind a paywall from you. All the information you need is free on the internet to learn about trading. The second part of the answer to this question is treat trading like a job. Someone told me one time that they treated their trading as if they were trading someone else's money, as if they worked for a company and that company gave them money to then go trade with. What would you do? How differently would you trade if that was your scenario? You absolutely would not break the rules that the company set for you or in this scenario that you set for yourself because if you did you'd get fired and not only that you would be liable for any losses since you didn't follow the guidelines laid out to you right so begin treating your trading in that way get an objective rule set for how you should trade and follow it like you are liable for the money that you lose if you don't right that helped me a lot get a lot better at this game and and I would just continue that with saying, build trade systems. Don't think that you can read the market. Don't think that you can tell what a stock is going to do. Can people do that? Are there discretionary traders that make money? Yes, there are, but they're very far and few between. The system trading, building real defined edges against the way the market moves is the much more proven way to make money in this game. So if you want to get better at trading, study system trading, study trading psychology. Everyone skips over trading psychology studying. They understand that they need to know trading psychology. You have told yourself that trading psychology is important, right? But have you read books on trading psychology? Have you watched seminars on trading psychology? I always say that, and yes, studying charts is also important, but an hour of studying trading psychology is worth 24 hours of studying charts. It's so important. You can know everything there is to know about charts, about how stocks move, about chart setups, about this, that, and the other. You're not going to make a dime trading if you don't have the trading psychology to follow your systems that you have built from the chart studying, right? So please study trading psychology. And a couple of uh, uh, recommendations I would send you out on that is... Um, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. And there are multiple seminars of Mark Douglas. Rest in peace. He's my favorite trading psychology teacher. But there's a couple of seminars from him for free out there on YouTube. So I really, really recommend giving him a shot. So to recap, treat trading like a business. Build objectively defined systems. Study trading psychology. Those are my quick tips I would give for getting better at this game. As always, if you would like access to trade systems that I have already built and tested, especially if you're using Thinkorswim, check out my website, 
daytradingstrategies.net where you are going to get access to all of my proven trade strategies written out in plain English. So even if you don't care about the code, you can see what the strategies are. You're going to get a share link that you can easily copy and paste into Thinkorswim so that you can have it running on your chart. You're going to get access to all the source code. So if you would like to learn how to code strategies, this is going to be very helpful for you as well. But once again, it's all available on daytradingstrategies.net top link in the description down below. And for those of you that make it to the end of my videos, I always say you all are the ones taking your trading education seriously. I like to give you a little bit of an extra boost. So if you use discount code END on the website when you sign up right now, you're going to get access to all of my codes for only $15. Daytradingstrategies.net. We'll see you over there. So that's my interview with Bloomberg. I really appreciate Bloomberg for giving me the opportunity to appear on their channels. They even put me on TV. Actually, I'll give you a funny quip here at the end of the video if you're still around. Uh, I did that interview and they didn't publish it for like nine months later. So honestly, I forgot about the interview. I just figured, oh, it didn't go that well. You know, it wasn't good enough content. Maybe they don't want to use it. One day my mom calls me up and tell me, tells me that her friend just saw me on TV that's how I was told. That's how I knew that the interview had gone live. So pretty funny. But big shout out to Bloomberg. Thank you for having me on. If you ever want to, again, just reach out. Uh, email contact in the uh, uh, about me section of my channel. Um, <laughs> and I really appreciated the opportunity to do this as well and to look back at that interview and to first off think about how much better I am on camera now I watched that interview just like you watching any old video of yourself talking and cringe a little bit so much better on camera now than I was then but more importantly how different my answers are today right I have three more years of trading experience under my belt and 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 if I do this video again in three more years, which maybe I will, I bet my answers will be even different. I don't believe you will ever become an expert in this field in the sense that you know everything. I think the field is always evolving. The market is ever changing. You are always learning. The day you stop learning is the day you will lose in this game. So it's it's fun to look back and see how see how I have learned and changed over the last three years. With all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Once again, daytradingstrategies.net, top link in the description down below. If you think those codes will add $15 worth of value to your trading career, then I'd recommend clicking the link and checking it out. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then you'll enjoy the other video that I'll link here that I recently made about how I turned from a non-profitable trader into a profitable trader.